Welcome you all to Revolutionize Your Emails, Captivate, Convert and Conquer. Uh, this is a new webinar where you will be getting some insights on how to deliver some seamless customer experiences. Uh, my name is Alesh William. I am the Demand Generation Specialist at XTM, and I'm joined today uh, by Matt Harris, who is the CEO and founder of Dispatch, and by Billy Burnett, who is the VP of Marketing at XTM. Welcome both. So um, we will going to dive straight in to this. Uh, I just wanted to, the first question we're going to talk about is, in this ever expanding digital landscape with various communication channels that are popping up almost on a daily basis, new ones almost every day, um, how does email continue to be one of the most uh, you know, important, one of the main engagement mediums for global businesses? Yeah, Alesh, well, thank you very much for uh, hosting us today. And, and Matt, great to be here with you on this webinar today. So I, I think this actually is a really interesting question because from my perspective, email continues to be one of the most consistent engagement mediums for global businesses. And, and in fact, you know, the stats, you know, I've seen more than 300 billion emails are now sent and received each year globally. So of course, there may be some campaigns or messages or CTAs that perform better in other mediums, but I certainly know in my marketing teams across multiple companies, email when done well has been a consistent driver of engagement and leads for us. You know, for most professionals, you're still constantly in your email inbox, even as other channels become more popular and, and rise and fall. So I think really until email as an overall business communication channel gets replaced, it will still be a really strong channel for marketers to leverage. Yeah, I absolutely agree, Billy. Um, first of all, I'm happy to be here as well and, and hang out and chat with you. Um, but uh, yeah, I think email is your identity. Um, if you uh, look at um, even like for legal reasons, um, you know, your bank can send you statements by mail, but they can also send you an email and that's like a legal record and, and um, until we have another uh, messaging channel that kind of replaces our identities online um, I think email is going to continue to be like you know the top channel or like a very important channel for for brands um, and um, I think it's especially important like we, we all went through um, the pandemic and, and saw um, like a drastic cut in all of our in, in budgets and, and paid acquisition and email uh, remained the consistent channel for marketers to reach their customers effectively and, and cost efficient. And um, I don't think that's going to change. It's an extremely high ROI and, and um, a lot of businesses are built on it. And so uh, it's not going away and it's just ever important. So uh, you touched on the concept of global engagement. Uh, so how do effective uh, localization of email campaigns help to create personalized experiences that establish a really strong brand presence in new markets. Oh. <laughs> um, I think email localization is like, um, it's, it was, it's usually an afterthought, if I'm really, really honest, because it's, it's very difficult. Um, and I think that's really sad. Um, uh, why do I think it's sad? Um, we just met, talked about how important email as a channel, um, over 300 billion emails per year being sent. I think um, uh, that's growing by like upwards of 20 billion emails per year. So email is really, really competitive. Every email marketer knows that they're competing for opens and for clicks and they're competing for the, for the inbox. Um, and so how does that relate to effective localization? Um, uh, as you're competing for the inbox, um, you're, you have to do everything you can to make those email really those better. Um, also because email is like that's all important channel. We're often reaching like a much wider audience on the internet than we might uh, previously. Um, and people are, are moving around more than, than ever. And so, you know, even as a, uh, you know, software as a service business based in Canada, I have customers in Australia, Germany, England, Berlin, France, South America, and I have since almost day one. Um, and so most businesses online are now global businesses by default. So you've got your number one channel, likely email, you're servicing a, you know, a global customer base. So um, why isn't email localization like really important to creating personalized experiences? Like, because, you know, it kind of feels like it should be. Um, and so um, I, um, I think it's important to think about 
you know, it's, if you buy my argument, it's quite a, it's quite important. Um, uh, when we talk about creating personalized experiences and personalization email in particular, people often think about, hey, I'm going to drop in a first name and a last name. And maybe if I'm getting complicated, I might do some like custom logic based on what kind of customer they are. Um, but uh, localization can actually play a big factor in that as well. Um, you can swap out assets or designs based on the customer locale. Um, you're obviously going to want to, if you're if you're sending out any kind of prices, you want to swap out currencies and that kind of thing. And so I think um, effective email localization is actually extremely important to doing um, personalized experiences because you need to um, kind of the right mix for each customer in whatever market they are, the right mix of the message. That's my thoughts. Yeah, Matt, I think it's it's a really great point. I'd love to dive back to where you started that it being an afterthought and uh, I'll raise my hand here as a marketer who has sent hundreds, if not thousands of emails. It's it in places in my career, it has been an afterthought. And especially, you know, coming from somebody who resides in the U S and, you know, has operated globally, you know, I think sometimes there's the mindset of, well, you know, we're speaking English here. A lot of other countries and people around the world may speak English as well, but the reality of it is, you know, there's different stats out there, and I'll, I'll cite one from CSA Research um, that, you know, 65% of consumers prefer content in their language, even if it actually is poor quality. So, you know, I think, you know, thinking about effective localization of email campaigns, even if it, you know, may historically have been an afterthought, really does demonstrate that your brand cares about local cultures, wants to communicate in the language that's most common there and you know i think it, it may be easy to think that while the rest of the world can certainly receive um, emails in english the reality of it is um, by not doing that you're missing an opportunity to create better relationships with your customers with your prospective customers um, and you know it is uh, you know honestly a, a missed opportunity when brands aren't taking advantage of of ways to do that so yeah I absolutely um, agree billy yeah, absolutely. And I think I really would like to start honoring the title of the webinar. And I want to start talking as well about how we can captivate, attract and engage our audiences. So picking up on the concept of effort and time efficiency uh, and how they are in today's fast paced digital landscape, how can marketers effectively balance personalization and automation, captivate their audience, but without having to sacrifice that valuable time, that efficiency? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll start here, Matt, on this one because I think there's there's a few things to say, and I think what I've how I've tried to approach this in the past is, you know, I think the the idea of personalization, whether it's you know specific to localization or not, is it can be quite overwhelming. I think for for marketers to embrace it, you know, every email really does potentially give you hundreds of different personalization opportunities, but I always say, you know, just start with something. If you're not already personalize something, start with something and, and test it. And really in general, I'm a huge advocate for having an A-B test running in, in almost every email that you send, certainly when there's a send list uh, at scale that can give you some meaningful results. Um, and when you're testing those things, try to find out what truly moves the needle in your market with your target audience, right? Something that works for one company and is important for one company may not be the same um, in another company. So that's one thing I'd say there, start with something and just test often and find out what works well with your market. The other thing I'll say is, um, and maybe coming across a bit, a bit biased perhaps is, as a, you know, a provider of, of software that can help with effective localization, but I do really suggest finding tools that help can automate this process. You know, if you're starting to localize your emails and doing it manually or relying on an agency to do it for you, you may find it to be quite complex slow, expensive, you know, all of those negative aspects um, that could, you know, ultimately have an impact on your your feelings on how to move it forward. But, you know, certainly as you scale, there's software like Dispatch and XDM that can help. Can help. And I maybe a quick plug, if I may, because um, Dispatch actually has a really cool ROI calculator on their website. So you can see actually just how much time you could save with the right technology to support localization so that really you can get in closer on understanding that balance of personalization with the efficiency so those are a few thoughts matt over to you yeah i think um uh i think efficiency in in uh in kind of personalization is super important i think especially with when it relates to email like 
most email marketers today aren't exceptionally efficient in um, changing their email. Um, so a, a large hangup we see in um, testing advanced email techniques, testing with more personalization and things like that are really caught up by the fact that marketers can't affect that change themselves because it requires coding or, or something like that. And it really like hamstrings their ability to test, test things. Um, so I've been working in email for over 20 years and I'm technical. And so I'm always on the cutting edge of what we can do with email and, and testing things out. But most marketers don't have that same capability. And that's why I think, um, hate to make that argument, but I think tooling is so important to do this kind of thing. Um, tooling is so important to make it, um, you know, seamless for you as a marketer to test out personalization to roll these things out and i'm not advocating you go out and you you know go buy the whole farm um from day one i do think um you can run a simple test of like you know hey we have a you know a small market even in the united states you can test out hey let's let's um you know take a mar subset of our market and test out spanish language messaging that could be really effective depending on demographics and you're like um you can um you know have one person on the team that uh you know work on that email and 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 uh change it over and i think um it's um uh um one of the sad things about email is that it is kind of an old technology relative to the to the internet it's it's as old as the internet sometimes we say that um and um it has it has all the, all these constraints that things like websites don't have email has a very particular form factor um uh, email um, could sometimes be open on on a right to left device, which um, breaks and and it's really uh, really tricky. And so um, that's one of the reasons why email is often overlooked from a localization standpoint is it's just so hard. It's not easy. Um, it's sometimes easy to test. You can copy your email campaign and paste it and then change all the text out. But how do you do it at scale? How do you do it? To, you know, not just two languages, but a hundred languages. Um, and um, I think. Uh, that's when tooling is really how you're going to succeed. Like this is not a problem to throw man hours against. Um, there are really, really good tools, um, not just dispatch, um, um, but like also the like platforms like XTM are incredibly important to doing this at scale. And that's what I'd really recommend is, is kind of like, think about this like holistically from like, what's the marketing stack that's going to go into this to make this effective for us. Um, yeah, those are my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on the topic of personalization, uh, what would you say are the key considerations when you adapt email content for different languages? So how can marketing professionals ensure that the essence of their message can remain intact, even while they're appealing to, you know, a wide variety of audiences? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, I think I already mentioned like right to left languages as a, as a key consideration. Um, um, so that's like, you know, some, you do need to make changes to the, the underlying code of email to ensure that works. And that's extremely complicated. And if you want to do this effectively and at scale to 300 languages or more, um, you can't have a developer involved at any time. So like I said, like um, keeping that in mind is super important. I think as well as to think about like, just think of localization as more than just we're going to swap languages. Um, um, think about, you know, if we're working in the United States versus, um, a market like India. India has like a is predominantly um, Android phones uh, running Gmail. United States iPhone is the, is the market leader. Um, both of those uh, mobile devices actually, I mean, um, Apple Mail on, on the iPhone and Gmail on Android, they render email completely differently. Um, and so it's like vitally important that your emails are robust and can and can support that, and that your localization workflow and, and everything doesn't. Um, uh, it doesn't change that, but it also means that maybe you target in a, a market that has more, you know, more desktop focus or something else. Um, you can change how the emails perform, you know, change what content is shown um, for each localization. And that's something to consider. You can also, you know, swap out assets. I think um, it's not quite localization, but Grubhub does some amazing like targeted emails. Well, they'll um, send you emails that are like, hey, it's raining in San Francisco. Like, don't go out for lunch, like order in Grubhub, right? And like, that's, you know, localized to me as a person when I'm in uh, in San Francisco and it's got a little picture in the rain of the city and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to go out and that. I want to order in. You can do the same thing when you're targeting different markets, and I think it's it's a uh, I think it's important to think about. Yes, great points there, Matt. Maybe to touch on a few elements that um, resonate with me with this this question. You know, I think um, keeping in mind the stat I shared earlier, 65 percent prefer content in their own language, even if done 
you know, maybe not done as well. I still feel like if you're going to go through the process of adapting email content for different languages, you still want to do this carefully. Um, so doing more than, you know, a simple online translation via uh, a machine translation tool like Google Translate, right? At the end of the day, it will translate your messages for you but it may not understand the context or may not, or may produce something with grammatical errors that if not checked could go undetected by you and your organization and unfortunately be detected um, by your reader and you know, losing that trust and, and credibility there. The other consideration is to understand how email etiquette may vary from country to country. You know, some countries approach it much more casually, some countries um, and locales approach it much more formally, and that can even vary just by, you know, the type of organization and the type of product that you offer. Um, you know, the other thing I'll say is just thinking about the entire customer journey um, when you're adapting email content for different languages, because it can be one thing to think you've got it covered when, you know, you spend the time localizing an email to different languages, but if the link to the landing page and, and different web pages and contents that you're driving to, if they're not also localized correctly in the same way, you know, that journey gets broken right there. And so the credibility that you, you maybe build from, you know, sending the email from a local, that's, that's localized, um, you know, you lose that credibility once people get to your website or to the piece of content that you're driving to, and it, it's not following that same thing. So even thinking about some of the smaller details within your emails too, like email footers and legal language that may be at the bottom, things like that, all of those are opportunities that, you know, with not, if you're not thinking about that full journey, you know, you may lose sight of. So just some, some of the considerations I think are important in addition to what, what Matt said. Absolutely. And, you know, this ties, I think we've talked, um, explained quite well what the captivation is. So I'd like to move on to the conversion aspect uh, of the email. So um, what personalized approaches uh, do marketers or can marketers use to address the unique pain points and needs of like individual leads? And by doing that, increasing the likelihood of conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Um... This is a really great question. I kind of touched on this earlier, but I think um, I think thinking of of this as as more than just um, localization and truly think of it as personalization is kind of like that's the this the approach I, I like to take here. That's super important. So thinking of how do we create like a really um, you know how do we bring personalization and localization to get together to create like a really optimized experience. Um, um, that's what I, I, I take. I cited the the Grubhub example as well already. Um, like swapping dynamically swapping assets based on the customer's like physical location plus localizing text, I think is really huge. Um, Billy's point um, previous about having cons like consistent links to a, you know a localized version of your website or your mobile app, super important as well. Like you um, you have to think about email as like a holistic part of your customer experience, and if it's like disjointed in some way, um, uh, that's really going to uh, decrease the likelihood of customer conversion. Um, uh, we really wanted to highlight an example um, that I think about a lot is, um, uh, as a brief story, um, Walmart Japan famously really, really struggled when Walmart uh, expanded there. Um, and um, some of the analysis looking at like why did Walmart struggle is that like um, in the United States, Walmart um, and across the globe, Walmart offers kind of like a one-stop shop for the lowest prices. And uh, when um, uh, analysts did a study on Walmart Japan, they found that the Japanese consumer didn't want the one-stop shop. They actually enjoyed the hunt of going to multiple stores and finding a deal. And that was like ingrained in their shopping mentality. And so if I take that example and I think about like, applying it to email, um, you know, a lot of e-commerce companies are really familiar with the, like, you know, send out an email, we're gonna list all of our top products on sale. Um, but if you go back to the Walmart in Japan example, like maybe that's not the best approach for the Japanese consumer. Maybe it's better to like, highlight a couple items that are on sale, or maybe the, um, you know, creating that that hunt, uh, hunting for the deal um, experience in emails can be more important. So maybe if it's, um, you know, a select few deals that are time limited, maybe that's going to appeal more. And so I think that's really important is to actually, you know, um, just look at the consumers and, and, and think about when you're doing um, localized email and trying to, you know, personalize these approaches, um, you are, you know, effectively, you know, you're launching your brand in that new country. And so you have to take that a uh, bit of a globalization mindset and um, kind of think about how's that new market going to respond? What are the incentives, you know, um, you know, 
how do they like to communicate and bring that into email as well? Yeah, I think some great points there, Matt. I, I think that's a really relevant example with Walmart, and I think there's probably countless other ones that we could we could cite and find, right? I think you know my my approach to to this question is, you know, I would try to really focus on understanding your audience of who you're sending emails to, right? I could sit here and give you a, a, maybe a list of personalized approaches that I think are are work, but I don't know, you know, who your customers are, who your prospective customers are, and what's interesting to them. So I really think before you start mapping out what personalized approaches you want to do, try to pull yourself away from what you as a marketer or um, you as an, you know, somebody sending an email think your customer or prospect wants to receive, and try to really understand what what they want to receive. So rather than you making assumptions, um, you can make some guesses, but try to validate that with customers. If you're sitting in in marketing, you know, try to talk to sales, find out, you know, what they're hearing from customers, what's important to them. If you have an opportunity to listen to uh, sales calls, things like that. I know many of us maybe have a tool like Gong or something similar where you can listen into sales calls and understand, you know, how are customers and how are your buyers actually talking about things that you want to. You may think you have the perfect messaging lined up from a marketing perspective that's ready to go in an email, but you may miss the mark because the customer doesn't actually think about it in that same way. So before you start thinking about necessarily the approaches you want to take, think first, do you really understand your target audience, right? And think about any time, any opportunity you have to really segment your audience down. You know, a lot of times in marketing, the other thing I'll say is, you know, you may go into your database and pull a big list of a variety of industries or personas or things like that and send them one one message and well that can work in some capacity right you're likely missing an opportunity to speak more directly to people in a specific industry or a specific a specific persona um, and really customize the message for them so that kind of even gets outside of the, the localization concept that we're talking about here as well but just thinking about how you can really truly try to understand who you're sending the email to and what's going to be important to them and not try to make those assumptions just because you know you uh, think you may know from a marketing perspective really try to get in and, and speak to customers or at least understand the language and how they refer to things as well i'm such a big fan of that billy using the customer's language is like so important to marketers and and it's um a lot of companies get caught up on their own internal jargon and how they want to talk and um yeah, like using the customer's language is super important, especially in email. Yes, it's a nice segue. So when we're talking about using the customer's language, one of the first things that comes to mind is translating those emails. Um, but I think we all agree with that we have to go beyond translation. So looking beyond translation, how can marketers incorporate, you know, specific nuances and references of a specific region, of a certain region, of a target region? Uh, into the email content, uh, and then that way create a sense of familiarity or being, uh, you know, build stronger connections with recipients. All of this ultimately, you know, drives a higher conversion rate. So how can marketers actually achieve this? Yeah, I think it's it's a great question, and um, I do think some of the things we just talked about on the last question also resonate and help address this one in the mindset of trying to drive, you know, higher conversions. Again, I, I think from from for me here on this question. It's really about thinking about the small details, right? I tend to be, and anybody, you know, Alesh is, is, is on my team here at XTM, and he knows um, that I'm going to scrutinize pretty closely every email that we send down to the, the smallest details, and I think that's really important here. Again, you could go through all the, all the work of getting the translation built and right, but then if you send the email at the wrong time zone, or you don't change the date format, or in you know, some of those small details, kind of balancing things depending on the locale, obviously some of that then, that credibility can be um, can be lost. So I really do think some of those small details, like thinking about when you're sending emails, a lot of email tools now, um, including HubSpot, which, which we use uh, at XTM, um, has things where you can send an email, you know, schedule an email once and send it out in the recipient's time zone um, based on what they have. So taking advantage of things like that, just so you kind of, you know, you're you're kind of thinking about that again, that full customer journey, and you may get a couple of things right, but try to avoid, you know, try to think about the small details as well to avoid some of the easy gotchas um, that could shine a light on, hey, you know, you tried but you didn't quite get everything across the line to be as effective as possible. 
Yeah, I think um, Timeline is a really huge one, Billy, and it's often overlooked, as you said, and it's kind of kind of sad because it's a really um, weird experience um, when it's it's not considered. Um, we mentioned this earlier as well, but I think like currency um, and daytime localization as well. Um, as a Canadian that also frequently does work in the United States, um, dates get confusing <laughs> because we use different date formats. Um, and so, um, you know, again, it's it's like um, every email marketer knows that like the, the risk of an email with a bad link is extremely high and consumers are very unforgiving because there's a hundred other emails in their inbox. And so um, I think that's like, one of the reasons some people shy away from localization is because of that that risk is like exemplified. Now I'm not just sending a bad link, but I'm being culturally insensitive, or like you know my my phrasing just doesn't make sense, and then my deal is going to fall flat. And so um, try to lower that bar so that you you know you can build up that comfort um, in doing it. Um, I think um, we we mentioned earlier like certain markets have a preference for certain devices. Um, you know Android phones winning in in, um, in India as an example. Um, uh, certain devices actually have different capabilities within email. Um, so uh, Apple Mail on the iPhone in particular um, supports um, uh, certain like auto-playing um, movies as, an, as a quick example. And so if you know you're sending out an email that's and your market's predominantly in, in the United States and um, uh, you can look at your open rates and you know it's mostly being open on, on iPhones, you know, maybe you experiment with um, uh, with doing, uh, you know, some kind of autoplay movie, um, cause you know, your market can accept that versus if you know, you're targeting like Gmail users in particular, India or South America, another market like that, that uses Android a lot. Um, and Gmail has a lot of email capabilities that other clients don't, and you can actually, you know, it's an investment, but, um, maybe you can leverage that. And, um, you, you know, some of those things like interactive carousels, as an example, can work really, really well for, um, for e-commerce and so that's going to definitely help you drive higher conversion rates so um, i think looking at the tech side of where your customers are and what devices they're using and comparing that with like a strong localization strategy um is like a really really good idea and trying to um, kind of like maximize conversions and so um as we're coming to the end of the webinar we've talked about captivating audiences we've talked about uh, converting audiences so we're left with the last Last part, last block of the webinar, how do we conquer the audiences? How do we win and how do we retain the attention? So, you know, with the increasing demand uh, for authenticity, transparency, sustainability, how can enterprise level companies effectively communicate their values and commitment to their customers through email campaigns? And how can they foster, you know, long lasting relationships with their customers, not just a one and done? How do they keep that going? So I think this is an interesting question. Um, one wrench and I'll throw in this is I, I think um, when we, especially in the context of localization in particular, I think non-enterprise customers have to, non-enterprise companies can and should think about this as well as enterprise. Um, the cost of entry to localize has gotten um, very so low and every company by default is now online and working with many different com uh, customers that, um, small medium-sized businesses should think about localization when this used to be an enterprise only challenge like i know startups in europe that are in 10 different local localizations already because they service a european market which is speaking different languages and they're prioritizing that um uh, at the enterprise level um you know consumers uh are very values fo values focused right now um, especially coming through like difficult economic times um and a pandemic and other things like consumers are very very value focused and so i think the enterprise brands that are succeeding are the ones that are communicating from like a values perspective to, to their consumers and um, kind of like creating a connection at a values level. Um, and this doesn't necessarily have to be like high end value, right? Like um, Amazon is like absolutely a massive behemoth in the United States and, and across the globe, right? And, and um, Amazon's not is, is known for being like fast and reliable, like all same day delivery in a lot of places as well as delivering like economic value as well to consumers and that's incredibly incredibly important so i think um uh you know uh, taking that values approach to marketing um and and building that relationship is like is uh the way to do it um coincidentally and, and luckily enough like um if you're communicating your values in the language that your consumer speaks higher likelihood that it's going to connect and match and so i think it's one of the reasons localization here is so important um and um I do think though, and a caveat I'll go back to is like the cost of, of a bad email is just so incredibly high. 
Um, and so I want every marketer and every email marketer to um, just feel like really confident and comfortable with every message they're pushing out. And so that, that's extremely important. You've got um, a tool chain or a marketing stack that gives you that confidence and so that you can experiment a little bit. You can try out um, sending out, you know, um, a new localization or try out a new personalization technique and do that with confidence. And that's like, I think really, really important to marketers. You have to be A-B tested. You have to be changing things up um, because our marketers, are, you know, everything is so competitive now. And so having a stack you trust and having, you know, a team around you, internal or external that you trust is just really, really important. And so that would be my advice in terms of uh, building lasting relationships. Yeah, I would really agree with everything you said, Matt. And I think, um, you know, it, I feel like we've, we've talked about a lot of great things in the webinar and this is a great question to end on before we get to, to any Q and A that we have. Um, and maybe one thing I just want to say is, you know, maybe we've talked about some of the areas to be, you know, to watch out for, but we don't want to paint a picture. And I think you, you said this well, Matt, like we don't want to necessarily paint a picture that, you know, localization or personalization should be, you know, is too, too hard or too scary to, to really dive into. It's just, you've got to approach it in the right way. And I think in terms of building those lasting relationships, I think just, you know, ultimately showing that you care and understand your, you know, your audience, right? And I think by doing some of the things we talked about earlier, listening to, you know, your customers, understanding, you know, what languages they speak, what's important to them. And then I also really think, you know, similar to what you said, Matt, try to avoid as many of those kind of gotcha errors as much as possible, right? Broken links or something. And I think we've all, anybody who's sent an email um, in mass and through a tool has done it. I have, it's, it happens. Uh, you send out the apology email with a correct link and you know you move on and learn from it. But um, even things like, I'm sure many of us have gotten an email where it's personalized with your first name and it's not your first name and something, something's off there or it's misspelled or it's weirdly capitalized or things like that. All of those things um, you know, are situations that could cause you to lose a bit of trust there, even as small as they may seem. Because at, at the end of the day, we all have to keep in mind that in many cases, we're one, maybe two, depending on your preference center, away from getting an opt out from somebody. And you know, depending on the day and time you your email reaches somebody, if there's an error in it, that may be the one opportunity you have where you you lose out on being able to communicate in the future. So, you know, I guess going back to where I started, I don't want to necessarily, and I feel like I did it again, where <laughs> we're, we're painting this scary, frightening picture. You know, you do need to go out and test things and learn, but approach it cautiously and you know, having the right tech stack, having the right processes in place for QA and that sort of thing can can really be helpful with all of this. So yeah, I, I think I think it's you're good to cause to to mention to caution, Billy, but also like acknowledge that um, mistakes happen and we and we can we can apologize and say say thank you. And if we do that, true to our values, maybe yeah. we build a better relationship because maybe That's that true. apology you know resonates. Um, and so yeah, absolutely. Okay, so. Gentlemen, we're out of time, uh, but we do have time for one question. We've had a few questions coming in, uh, but we do have time for one of them. Uh, I'm going to leave you to, you know, to choose who to answer. Uh, we got a question, which is, to what extent should we trust AI-based tools in localization, I suppose, of, in, of emails in this context? Yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised, I think, <laughs> to, to get a question like this. Um, you know, a couple things I'll say on this, you know, one, I think, you know, AI has been quite the hype for the past several months. And I think it is a powerful tool for us to use in emails, whether, regardless of whether it's specific to localization or not. You know, I know, for example, I mentioned we're a HubSpot um, user here. There's some great new features within HubSpot, just to be, a, be a, the ability to copy, uh, highlight over a, a block of text and have it be rewritten through their AI integration it can be pretty powerful, especially when you're facing writer's block or sending another, you know, invite to the same webinar, right? It's a great opportunity to, to rather than you sitting down to rethink it can be done in a matter of, of seconds. Um, but when it comes to localization, of course, you know, using some of the AI tools that are available can be a helpful start to making the process more streamlined, but you still need to approach it cautiously and do as much QA checks as possible. And I also think, you know, um, some of the things that we're doing on the XTM side um, to how we approach AI are also, I think, quite relevant here. 
And, you know, that's with regard to some of the, you know, QA checks that we have in place. So, you know, AI powered quality checks that are now available within XDM, which help with automatic identification of offensive or discriminatory language, or the automatic identification of sentences that fall under certain quality standards, right? So that's a way to use AI. So whether you're using machine translation or AI to help generate something or a human translator, some of these flags can help make sure that you avoid some of the uh, risks that we identified earlier. So I guess those are a few ways um, that you could use AI-based tools to your advantage when it comes to localization and personalization of emails. Yeah, I'd agree with you there, Billy. Like I'd, I'd be incredibly skeptical of you know running your email through Google Translate. It's never a good time, um, and I don't think um, we're we're pretty far from when that uh, when that's going to change. But um, I think AI augment AI the role of AI and localization is like augmenting tools we have now to provide, you know, better level of checks or, or like, you know, as you said, like get over writer's block and things like that. Those are all like really powerful um, ways to leverage it. So it's kind of where, where what we're seeing as well. So with that, we've come to the end of the webinar. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Matt. Uh, if you have any additional questions on what we discussed today, we would love to continue the conversation with you. You can always email us, as you can see, a marketing at XTM international.com or at hello at dispatch.io. Uh, we also have a series of resources for you that we think you'll find uh, very interesting. Um, so we'll make sure to get those to you. And if you added any questions in the chat and we didn't get around to it, don't worry, 